Good day, I'm Clive and welcome. Today I'm having a quick look at the Softy Elite sleeping bag from Snorkback. Now I've been testing this out now for over 12 months. I uh, did last winter, I've done this winter, so we're looking at about the last 14 15 months. I've used it in different scenarios, ranging from, excuse me. Temperature down to about 3 degrees Celsius uh, in a summer tent, single skin with the most ventilation you go. On a 4.2 R value sleeping pad, so the pad I know works nice and warm. All the way through to this year, the temperature dropped down to roughly the same temperature again, about 3 4 degrees, maybe 5 degrees Celsius or centigrade in a 4 season in a tent so went from the worst to the best scenario now with sleeping bags they give you a temperature rating a comfort one and the comfort rating is where the average male or the average person will be warm or comfortable not cold not hot just comfortable and then they've got, uh, some will call it an extreme, and this, I think the sub pack call it the lowest temperature, which is minus 10, and that's for a fit, healthy male. Let's say rugged guy, plenty of meat on him. So, I'm not there. I'm a little bit shorter, a little bit slimmer, broad shoulders, but I'm not there. The rating for this comfort rating is minus five and the extreme is or the lowest is minus ten and the comfort ratings in that are based on wearing like a base layer a merino layer or pjs or something in a tent or a shelter um, made for the conditions so it doesn't mean that you can go and for example, on the Billmore track at minus five in one of the shelters with just three sides on. I personally don't understand or I don't think that will come under the guise of for the situation because there's only three sides and it's open at front. And like I did, I used a summer uh, tent that doesn't come under it. What their description is in the right situation is in like a tent with a four season inner. So I went from one extreme all the way up to a four season inner. I've tested this through. First of all, it comes with medium size compression bag. Pretty good condition, strong, draw cord on it, just flat on the top, so when you've got your sleeping bag in there, that covers it, cinch it closed, reduces the chance of any dirt getting in there. Good webbing on there, good buckles for doing it up and undoing it. Size wise, let's see, I've got it all written down here. When it's packed away, where are we? It's gone. It's, I think it's about 22 by 25. No, oh, it's 26 centimeters in length by 22 centimeters in width. So the pack is sleeping bag itself. Let's go to it. Weight 1.6 kilos. Pack size 26 by 22 centimeters. Comfort rating minus five. Uh, lowest rating minus 10. Now. We've got the length, which is 220 centimeters. The width changes. We've got it one at 75 and another one at 87.5. That's because on a sleeping bag, we have this side baffle. So if you want more room in there, you can do the main zip zip up the side baffle I'll show you that in a moment so baffle done up 75 baffle undone 87.5 is it yes 
the foot box is 42 centimeters or 42 centimeters that makes no difference and I'm sure the knees I'm gonna to have to go and double check that I'll be right back the knees with the baffle done off is 60 and 72.5 went undone so that just gives you more room and the whole idea of that is you want to be more comfortable to spread out have the baffle undone if it's colder temperature and you want less air space in your sleeping bag you can zip that up and it'll help keep the sleeping bag warmer it's for up to somebody of 1.9 meters 190 centimeters now the fabrics the outer fabric is a paratex micro with 100% polyester the inner material is a Paratex light with a reflector therm, which is again 100% polyester with a softy insulation. Now the inside of this fit box, it's waterproof. So let's open up to show you. Nice, rugged, waterproof, so you can wear your boots whilst in the sleeping bag. And whilst we've got this like this, there's two loops here. So you can actually attach a liner to the inside of this without having to worry about it all coming up and getting tangled. That two, them two loops will help keep it in place. Now the zippers, I've got it set with the expandable part open. All you need to do to change that is the zipper here. I'll just undo it, tuck that one inside and use the zipper on the outer side. How you normally do a zip up, you just put it in. Right, make sure it goes all the way down to the bottom. Which, yep, yeah, there it is. And zip it up. Now the area inside the sleeping bag is smaller, so there's less space to warm up. Or if you're a big guy or a big person, let's say, you may need the expandable part all year round. On the bottom here, we've got two hooks which will swivel around and move. And they connect to D-rings here. And what that is, is if you're shorter, you can just do these up and now the sleeping bag's not as long and if you flip that over so you can see even less room to warm up in cold weather What else have we got on the list here? Okay, got the deployable side baffle we've gone through, got the adjustable length we've just done, we've got the internal reinforced foot box, up the collar end, the head end, let's pull them down. Adjustable, so we can pull it and tighten it up, and it's got a nice line lock. So you're nice and snug here for your face so you're not going to lose much heat. What we have got on the YKK zippers is if you use it, hook and loop or your Velcro to help stop the zip moving up, uh, moving down in your sleep.
Okay, we've got another on the inside, a colour one, which will come around your neck, hold the heat in. I think, yeah, they said elasticated draw cord, but they're not. They're just paracords, not elasticated. But that will close off that around your neck. So your neck will be here. Let's do that up. So your neck will be out there, your head will be up here, so nice and warm in there. You head up here with your beanie on your pillow or without. Also on the inside we have a valuables pocket they call it. Just with Velcro to hold it shut. Decent size. My hand from there to there. Nice big phone if you want to keep a phone in there, snacks or your beanie or whatever. Okay, what we'll also show you while we've got the zip open, we've got some stiffened, what do they call it? Anti snagging zipper webbing. It is just a little bit like your webbing. On your packs just not as thick and that's to help stop i think about a size 5 ykk zippers on these it just helps them getting caught up in the material and i've got it on here this side too but that's only on the inside not on the outside now storage wise It arrives in the compression sack, rolled up and nice and tight in there. You can get it back in the bag fairly easy. Just fold the foot over and shove it in from the foot end first so all the air pushes out this way. But really, that does compress the insulation in these. Any sleeping bag, it will compress it. So best bet is don't store the sleeping bag in the compression sack. I don't even carry this in the compression sack. It's like I just got back for two days on the Bibbleman track and all I did is I shoved it down to the bottom of my actual backpack and put my stuff on top which just squashed into there but didn't compress it to where it was too tight. I have noticed a difference with doing that. I tried it a few times first when it's in the pack, the uh, compression sack as part of the test and out of it. The warmth when it was in the compression sack wasn't as good as if you had left it out or popped up, uh, stored away. And you got these hooks on the bottom or with D-rings. You can hang it up in your wardrobe if you want. But it's, like I said, as soon as I left it out, the, uh, left it puffed up to start shoving it in the bottom of my pack where it's not getting really compressed it did feel warmer now getting to the temperature side about it at the between the, the two three four five degrees centigrade was I warm in it um, in the first tent no I was bloody cold this last trip I just did, I put a thermal base layer on, and that's all. And it got down to the like between two, between two and five degrees Celsius. There's a ba insulated base layer which is a merino wool, but it's not one of the big thick. I only paid twenty dollars for the top and twenty dollars for the bottom, so it wasn't one of these big fancy, expensive brands. I was warm, but. Would I trust it down to minus five comfort rating? Personally, I would not. Definitely not down to the minus 10. I think probably take it down to the zero, like I said, having the, the base layer on only. And that is what they recommend when it comes down to their temperature ratings. <clears throat> but if you want, want to take it down below the zero personally, 
you're going to need your thermal on there then you're going to need your pants on there you're probably going to have to wear a fleece jacket or a puffy jacket or whatever in there down jacket but if you're just going on the fact that you got a base layer on like i had i wouldn't take it down much further than zero to be honest weight wise like i said it's about 1.6 you can get a lot lighter comfort wise it's really really comfortable using a zipper on uh, what's in there doing it up and undoing it really really easy because a zipper is a two-way zipper so not only can you pull it from the outside it folds around back on itself to the inside and you can undo it from the inside nice and easy now I didn't use the Velcro, the hook and loop here, when I was uh, using it. That was just left like that with the zip. And it did not come down all night, the zip did not move. The collar on the inside, that did a great job. It fitted snug, not too tight, and that gave that little bit of insulation. I mean, you got a nice warm scarf on. That's what it felt like with that done up. With the pillow in here, your hood isn't going to go over your head. It's going to come to the top of your head. So if you are going to use a pillow, uh, mine's over here, just unpacked from the other day, you're going to want to wear a beanie because this here hood isn't going to come all the way. But if you have got the pillow underneath, that will tighten up and like I said, it'll come where you've got your face here. So you're able to breathe, you're able to see out. You can actually cinch it up even smaller. But as long as you've got your mouth outside, you're not going to get any condensation or dampness and you're going to be nice, toasty, snug and warm. The only thing that I could say they want to look at doing is probably a little bit more insulation then I think the average person would be able to take it down to the minus five. But I think the average person, we're looking down to about zero, zero degrees Celsius, centigrade, whatever you want to call it, with your base layer on and a beanie on. Yeah, I personally wouldn't take it below that without a couple of extra layers on there. Even in the bivy bag, the bivy bag it was a little bit more comfortable, a little bit warmer in the bivy bag. Because I had my base layer, I had the sleeping bag, and there was hardly any room. All I had was my pack at the bottom of the bivy bag, so there was only like an inch between, an inch or two between me and the actual bivy bag out of itself. Then it was probably a couple of degrees lower. You could take the temperature down. Uh, in a tent you've got all that big open area even with the four season uh, inner but now in a bivy bag you can take it lower uh, that's it it's, it's, that's the only negative is not being able to go down to the minus five comfort rating even with their um, preferred way of use so i'd reckon a four person tent a four season tent would cover that unless they're thinking that preferred wear uses in a bivy bag like a military very little room there nice and warm so yeah bivy bag thumbs up yes works great four season in a tent works okay summer tent in the winter is a no-no <laughs> it, it just yeah you can put all your stuff on even with folding this over, reducing the amount of room in there, my feet got cold in the summer tents whilst using it in the winter. But all in all, it's a pretty good sleeping bag. Would I buy it again? I want. I got got one now, so I wouldn't need one. Uh, if I didn't have one, yes. Or. Would I now go for something lighter? Now that will depend on you, 
what you want to use it for hiking four or five days then go with a, something lighter if you're doing it for an overnight or a couple of nights in the weekend where you go out to camp and you're staying there for two nights then yeah it'd be great for that so i hope you've got some ideas and it's helped you if you're thinking about buying one of these and if it has helped you and you've enjoyed the video and you're not a subscriber please go down below click on the thumbs up button first then click on the subscription button and then select all next to it so you can be notified of all future videos coming up and if you are already a subscriber again i thank you very much